What's up, guys? This week's bullshit. You gotta utilize uh, iTunes on my phone. With me is Joe. As always, is Joe my hetero life mate? No. But, um. So, movie time, huh? So many things to talk about. We don't even know where to start. But anyway, freaking, that's, I guess we start off by saying we enjoyed ourselves immensely. We went twice. <laughs> you know, we went on Friday, and then we we went again on Saturday. So that's just basically, I'm not going to go to a movie on Saturday if, you know, it's not awesome. So, uh, obviously, we both enjoyed the movies. We both have a little bit of different point of view on stuff. But anyway, <coughs> I got some questions I'm going to ask Joe here, and then we're just going to kind of riff on that. Um, what was the fa- your favorite moment from the film? I mean, the real the question is, can you really pick a favorite moment? I mean, personally, when I saw Queens light, you know, when I saw Queens on the screen and knew they were going into the introduction to Peter Parker and Spider Man, it's yeah, 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 it was on, it was on at that point. Yeah, there was something about the Tony Stark scene with Peter Parker for the first time. It was just like one of those giddy, like yeah, look at, <laughs> like look there, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> like they're both on the screen together. That's him awesome. explaining, but, uh, you know. Uh, I think Spider Man fanboying out everywhere over everything was freaking awesome because he was such a geek for the characters that he was like fighting against, yeah. which was awesome. Uh, uh, there is a lot of really, really good ones. So what, was, uh, so what was your surprise? The big surprise, something that something big surprise in the film for you, meaning like what th- something you you enjoyed. Not necessarily be surprised, but something you enjoyed. But you weren't. I you, you, I you weren't going into it thinking this is what I was going to love about this movie. But when you came out the other end, you were like, "Oh, oh wow, that was awesome." I mean, there really is so okay, much. Like, I mean, go. We'll go into more. I mean, overall, I I really loved T'Challa in this movie. I loved the Black Panther. But the biggest surprise for me in the movie was Zemo, the 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 Marvel Cinematic Universe of Zemo. I, I mean, his plan was masterful. I mean, him being from Sokovia was the, definitely the biggest surprise for me. Um, again, you know, you guys know all the backstory on Zemo. I don't want to have to get into that. But, yeah, the overall, the, the, the way Zemo was handled was the big surprise for me in the movie. Mm-hmm. How he was, you know, he was behind everything and he broke him. So, great villain. Great mine, villain. mine was Wanda. Love me some Wanda. For some reason, I couldn't get enough of her in this film, and her skill set is also off the charts. But she's got some seriously tasty looking legs too. Cheers to Wanda. Cheers to <laughs> Wanda. Anyway, so anyway, we gotta ask, whose side are you on? Well, obviously, I'm Team Iron Man, and uh, for good reason. Being, but you know what? You can't really, you can't really say, oh, you know, with the whole the choosing of the sides. They were both right. Like, they both were right in what they believed in and you know there was no wrong answer but you know yes, there was. Tony Stark <laughs> Tony Stark ride or die Tony much, Stark whatever ride. no Captain does the right thing despite what governments think you know <laughs> I mean it's all I, there, there's a lot of things that go into it do, I feel, do, I, do I feel for Tony of course I feel for Tony but I, I, I think I understand uh, Cap's original point of view when he was sitting in the room with the guys that you know what if they decide to uh, make us go someplace that we don't want to go or not let us go someplace where we're needed, you know. So, uh, I don't know. That, that, that's, that's, that's me. In a nutshell. Oh, wait. Um, I said there was equal, I thought there was equal respect done to the new guys. Uh, Spider-Man and, uh, uh, Black Panther, both in the MCU for the first time. And I thought that they did a nice job chopping up, like, an equal portion for each character, showing them respect. That's, that's where I'm at with that. I'm gushing. <laughs> gushing with T'Challa love right now. I love the way he was handled. It was perfect. You know, and T'Challa, you know, also, you know, became the king of Wakanda in this movie. You know, it, it, just his growth, like development, his poses, the fighting style, like, was just so on point. I'm like, wow. And obviously, you know, I, I just, I can't really just... Speak enough. I mean, it's Spider Man. It's Spider Man the way he's supposed to be. Every, I mean, I've been waiting for this a long time. I mean, it was just perfect, and it's just the the quibs, and he was always talking and fanboying while he's fighting. I mean, he was kicking major ass. I mean, I just welcome home. Like, I just, I, I loved it. I love Peter Parker. He's a very likable character, indeed. As was uh, T'Challa. I mean, 
freaking Bosman did a fucking Dude. he nailed that shit. Plus, Dude. I love the way they had him move. Like anytime he landed, he just did this like cat like landing and shit. It was all very soft and quiet. So awesome, so perfect. Um, but of course, you know what? What do you got? Spider Man with Spider Man. Oh, yeah. that that shit was just ridiculous. I but know. uh, I've been like this for two days. Yeah, anyway, I can't take it. Right, what did you think was the turning point for Tony, though? I think we were talking about this early on. I just wanted to kind of bring it up. It was like we both kind of saw that in the movie there was a, a kind of a turning point for Tony and a turning point for uh, for uh, uh, Captain Rogers as well. So, you know, it was uh, for for me, of course, I think it's the same for everybody, but it's like when Sharon Carter was giving her speech, it kind of like just reminded Cap of what he had already believed, you know? So that was kind of like his thing where he, as soon as... She said that it was like, yeah, I'm never signing that, <laughs> you know. Like, but uh, uh, and Tony had his moment at the elevator. We talk about that. Yeah, at the elevator, um, lady, you know, put a picture on his chest of her son that she lost in Sokovia, and I think it really hit, it really hit Tony, you know, home of you know his prior actions and you know how obviously they couldn't save everybody. I mean, they were saving the world, but there were always going to be casualties, but. That right there just proved that, hey, you know what, we need, we do need to be in check. You know, we can't just, you know, take everything to, into our own hands. So that was a big turning point for Stark as well. So Indeed. Um, I, I think we are, he already talked about it as, as far as, uh, uh, I wanted to mention it. I put it on my talking points, but he already kind of talked about it as his favorite moment of the movie. And that's a... Uh, Zemo beating the Avengers without even, you know, besides the guy from Hydra that he tortured for information, he really didn't do any violence. He just kind of... He didn't have to pick up a finger and he broke the Avengers. He just fucked with him. So that was... uh, was... Although I would have liked more character building on his aspect because it seems like, oh, Zemo, we hardly knew you other than the fact that you're brilliant and they took down the Avengers. So... (laughs) You this know. is the birth of Zeno. Like, the, the, this was the birth of Zemo. Which I accept. Right. But at the same time, you know, I wouldn't mind some a little bit more character building on that minor gripe. Uh, he definitely uh, defined himself by beating him up. Uh, not, you know, whatever physically. Blah, blah, blah. You know what the hell I'm saying. Uh, after that, I think I put down her... Oh, no. When wanted to put down Vision, I thought that was like, oh, my God. Wow. Look at the skill set on this bad boy. Like, seriously, like, she's freaking messing up somebody who's got a, an infinity stone in his head. You know, which hints to the general <laughs> audience, because they're not like us, to know the true that. I mean, Wanda's skill set is bar none. I mean, she's the top two heroine okay. in the entire Marvel Universe. I mean, and, you know, without without Wonder around, not knowing what, you know, how... Because you don't powerful. really don't know exactly how powerful she is, and I don't even think she does. But uh, she's just starting to tip the iceberg, I think, with some of the stuff that she can do. But, uh, I mean, if she were not there, then you would have to say somebody like uh, uh, Hulk or Thor would have to literally go up against the Vision in order to neutralize him. I mean, it remains to be seen whether or not he can actually be put down and put down for good. But Clint, noble effort. Bar- oh. Barton had a noble effort. Well, you know, that's, enjoyed that but that is Barton from the comics, though, too. I mean, he, he could be the last Avenger standing, and it could be a 500-foot beast, and he's going to be like, all right. I'm, uh, I'm <laughs> sure I got something in here. That's why we love Barton, because yeah. he's, got, he's got the bravery of, uh, of, of somebody who actually has superpowers, but he has none. So. Um, and he was great in the movie as well. Um well, we did say we're going to put spoilers in this thing because one thing that's, that, that that was, uh, I mean, my surprise like was, my surprise like for the film was Wanda because I was like, I, I didn't expect to love her in the movie as much as I did love her. But she, she does a really good job of playing a strong person but also a victimized person. But the big surprise was Giant Man. I mean... <laughs> it was insane. That was a huge surprise. I had just no idea. Fucking playing I had absolutely no idea that was coming, number one. Number Lang two, was great. Number two... I always thought that Giant Man on the big screen would be a bad idea just because I didn't, I couldn't see a way for them to do it and actually make it look cool. And then when they did it, I was like, that looks cool. <laughs> like, you know, it was, they did a great job with it. So, I yeah, mean, hell yeah, you know, Giant Man on the screen, it was, it was, it, and it worked. It wasn't too cheesy, it just worked. It was great. And Spider Man with the Empire Strikes Back comment. Uh, just about to say that. Freaking I mean, perfect. Marvel continuing the trend with uh, the uh, Star Wars Easter eggs. It's I all mean, connected. Yeah, it's all connected. <laughs> I mean, the fact that it's showing his age in a really old movie line was was, was fantastic. Yes. Um, honestly, Ant Man was great. I mean, uh, Lang, the Lang scenes were great. How he got recruited was awesome. It's, it fit, everything fit perfectly. 
Um, Paul Rudd making a liar out of me. <laughs> the Rudd hater. I hate Rudd, Rudd, but I loved him in this movie. I loved, loved him. him. I loved him in the movie. I thought he was great. It was impressive. The whole giant man, the whole obviously the whole airport scene, um, was great. And um, obviously, I, my opinion, probably the best comic book action sequence. I mean, there was a lot of action sequences. The chase down with Bucky and I mean the one yeah. in the, the one in the beginning when Wanda lifts Cap into the you know correct uh, taking down crossbones. It was thing. so the Russos know there was so action. Many. I know. mean, the Widow had some kick-ass scenes in that opening sequence as well. She was lighting shit up. Uh, Falcon's new new, uh, new Falcon was really badass in this movie. Seriously, man, Falcon new, was his, badass. His new wings were the shit. They really, really were. Um, so yeah, all in all, dude, this is and the overall pacing of the movie is unlike any movie that I think we've any we've experienced. Agreed. Agreed. We're so used to the let me say the firework uh, firework finale ending. At the end. That's what it is. Like you know, you're so used to that. But we got that finale. like a little bit after the middle of the film, and then we got to see how everything else fleshed out with Zemo and you know Tony learning the sad truth. Um, you know, behind the death of his parents, which was like the deal breaker. It was like after that, it was like all bets are off. Another another reason that the Russos may have said that this was inspired by Empire Strikes Back is because when you leave the movie, you don't leave the movie like, yeah, we won. You know, you yeah, kinda... the Avengers <laughs> lost. You know, they, they, yeah. Zemo did win. Yes, he's locked up. You know, but, but the you know, they're fractured. Is done. You know, is done. You, know? Is done. you know, Steve broke out the other Avengers. It's going off into secret Avengers, and Tony has his Avengers. Obviously, they're going to come back together. The fighting scenes in this movie were brutal, and they were excellent. Each co character complemented so well. Like, you were like, that's Black Panther's fighting style. And that's the way the Winter Soldier is supposed to look. And that's Spider-Man. Like, every... Marvel just did the paying attention to detail. It's hard I to mean, say that without getting all giddy. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> Spider-Man. Yeah, I mean, it's like... <laughs> Spider-Man. Spider-Man. It's Spider-Man. You know, it's... <laughs> But no, but it's very mean, emotional it, it, for that's me. Why the whole, that's why Giant Man was such a huge surprise to me because I always I went into the movie thinking I'm going to be most impressed by Spider Man. But when they did that, I was like, wow, that was a surprise that really got me. It was really, The Giant Man surprise was fucking fantastic. So, uh, if you guys, I, I'm pretty sure we'll put a spoiler tag on this if I forget. But oh, well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. Uh, so. Joe's last question was best individual arc within the main story arc. Like, in other words... In other words, is this. Is that, obviously, the big story arc was the Civil War, but it, with, even with the introducing with the new characters and the old characters, it seemed like everybody had their own story arc, which was all automatically fleshed out with perfection. Um, obviously, Spider-Man is like, oh, gushing, you know, and getting... You know, to see Aunt May as well was awesome, but for me personally, Black Panther's story arc was perfect in this movie all this is going on and then boom you know we get to meet t'chaka you know we get to, to see the love he had him and his father had for each other ultimately the death of his father him having to deal with that having to go back to his nation as the king of the nation and you know with the decision making and you know everything about him you know was like to trust no one fuck you i don't care like i'm gonna do what i want what i think is best for me and my people it was perfect the accent. The, I mean, what more can I say about this? At the end, when we saw, you know, just that little bit of Wakanda in the statue, I was like, "Holy shit! Holy shit!" Black Panther, the child story arc, loved it. Loved it. Loved the whole movie. I think personally, it, it's probably the greatest comic book movie ever. Um, the best action sequences ever. I mean, it's just a culmination. It's hard now. The more movies that come out, because some are just special, like the Avengers had. The magic to it, and you know, Guardians of the Galaxy had that heart to it, and you know, even Age of Ultron, you know, had elements to it that all makes you love it. So it's hard to say. Like Iron Man One is a special movie, but this was just like it hit it on all cylinders. Like everything just clicked to perfection. It literally was its own thing. I mean, with the pacing and the way they did it and the way they structured the movie itself too and I, I saw the articles about how they wanted to have the big fight at the in the third act and everything and they decided that Bruce was fought not to do it that way and it should have gone down to be a personal thing between Tony and the Winter Soldier those three should have been because really that was kind of what it was all about anyway but uh, I mean the, the Sokovia Accords aside 
the conflict was going to wind up being between those three characters. So it was nice that they ended it that way. Uh, I mean, the spiders, the spiders, the, the spider signal. I oh, mean, the oh, signal. By the, oh I mean, holy also, shit! I was like, oh my god, they're like they're going way back with this. Oh yeah, well there was, was that so too, awesome. but also like the, you know, Peter they, Parker they, is Stark they, they, they showed some spider spider sense too a little bit in that movie. It was very subtle, but he was like, oh. Like he said, oh shit, and he turned around and like ducked and fucking, you know, from something coming from behind him. And I was like, fuck yeah, spider sense. Spider sense. But uh, uh, as far as the story arc is concerned, I, I agree with Joe on that. Black Panther is definitely so intriguing now. Like, you know, they dropped. His, movie, they his dropped, solo movie is so intriguing now. They dropped just enough information from his character to us to get us like super, super intrigued for the, 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 the full like feature film. And he definitely is a. A strong character, very intriguing very character, strong. very intriguing character. So you just like you want to know more. I, I need to know more, you know. But uh, and definitely a lot of super nods. But anyway, I think that's all we got, folks. We're gonna sign off here and try to see this movie multiple times. Ten out of ten. Marvel has done it again. Yes. Bring on the rest of Phase Three. It's time to go cosmic. Rock Woo! on. X Men is next for those of you who like that sort of thing.